This is the Surly Grognards for September 11th, 2017. This is Peter Bowman, and as always, I'm joined by my good friend and co-host, Eric Carlson. How are you doing tonight, Eric? Hello. I'm doing all right. Excellent. So uh, before we get started, I uh, just wanted to say uh, our th our thoughts and such go out to uh, all the people out, in, out in, in the Texas area and in the Florida area and such everywhere, and God, everywhere has just been run over by Irma. And also yeah, yeah, you guys kind of... Um... Yeah, sorry the Storm Gods decided to pick on you this year. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we got a couple of friends uh, who game with us routinely on during our tabletop weekly tabletop thing on uh, on Friday nights. Uh, Nick Wireless Time and uh, Sk Michael and Skitch, uh, who both live in Florida. Uh, they both seem to be fine. Nick's without power currently, but other than that, he seems right. to be doing all right. So I'm ecstatic about that. Yes, it's... I'm very happy that they are undamaged. Um, uh, but there's, a lot, there's been a lot, a lot of bad shit that's happened. Uh, like, yeah. It's just, it, God, some of the Caribbean islands got completely flattened. Yeah, they got fucking flattened. Like, Florida got hit hard, but it wasn't, wasn't near as bad as they were um, worried it was going to be, thankfully. Yeah. Still, like... Miami was, like, most large of the parts, so, uh, Yeah, large parts of Miami were completely submerged, so... <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Yeah, we we where we live, we don't get that shit. We merely get buried in snow, uh, yeah. and it's not as bad as some places. But we, I don't know. The careful what you say, dude. We just barely missed getting nuked by Sandy. That's true. No, we've we've gotten hit with the after effects of of of, of the late stages of some some hurricanes. Uh, God, what was that one yeah. back in like the eighties? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that one vaguely. I remember that one. Yeah. That was bad, but it wasn't like, you know, jig bad. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, so, <clears throat> anyways, we just wanted to get our, get, get that out there that we, you know, got, you, got, got everybody in our thoughts. At any rate, t this week, we are going, we're not going to do any sort of recap of what, talk about what we've been doing the past week or so, because um, not a lot of interesting stuff for either of us, really, past week or so. Uh, but this week we're going to be doing one of our campaign brainstorming sessions because we haven't done one in a while. So, we, yay! Uh, so we sat there thinking a little bit about what we wanted to do, and I said, uh, maybe something involving Mecca. And Eric had posited maybe doing like space opera, post-apocalyptic. Uh, but we ended up settling on do sort of doing a Mecca campaign combined with a with the the fantasy genre because blending things with fantasy is always interesting and i'm a sucker for giant robots well yes eric is giant robots are eric's thing i like um, giant robots <laughs> yeah yeah you'd totally be coop wouldn't you i would to oh are you kidding that was friggin <laughs> yeah Ma megas xlr was pretty much hey here's what happens you give eric a giant robot <laughs> yeah and you wonder why we say you can't have one, Eric. I would totally use it responsibly. What was that about Schenectady? Exactly. Uh-huh. Or was it Poughkeepsie? I forget. I don't know. <laughs> All I know is I'm blowing shit up. That's not responsible, <laughs> Eric. I think we could argue yes in certain cases. <laughs> At any rate... Uh, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna sort of come up with a we're gonna brainstorm up a a fantasy campaign with involving giant mechs, involving involving mecha, not, nece not necessarily giant, but possibly giant. We'll get to that. Who knows? Yeah, I'll we'll get to that. Uh, step one, we've got it. We're gonna have to try to avoid <laughs> falling into visions of Escaflone. Uh <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, it was kind of like you said fantasy mecha. I was like, okay, so we'll make sure we'll avoid Atlanteans and fate manipulating empires. <laughs> Yeah, th th those would be good things to avoid. <laughs> uh, we both love uh, Visions of Escafloni, apart from the ending a little bit, but... Yeah, Escafloni is great. Just, uh, yeah, um, kind of don't want to just make Escafloni light. Yeah. Um, never mind the fact that, we are, that, uh, that the campaign won't, be, won't have a soundtrack by Yoko Kano, so, you know... Yeah. 
Yeah, God so we won't uh, we won't have that going for us. <laughs> God damn, she's good. Uh, <laughs> at any rate, so uh, fantasy and mechs. So I guess the first, I mean, so all right. What I mean, I guess the real crux of it is what kind of mecha are we talking about at this point? Like how big, you know? Well, I think uh, I don't have a problem with different sized mechs. Right. So you could have them anywhere from like a dozen to thirty feet tall. I think would be fine. Sure. I was thinking the size is, is an important bit, obviously, because yeah, it. They, I mean, yeah, and I, I think we're. I, I don't know if we want to. I, given that it's an RPG campaign, I think we kind of want to avoid the super robot syndrome. Okay, so keep it about like a dozen to twenty feet or so. Right. I mean, super robot. And, and we both. I mean, honestly, my, my in many ways, my preferred you know mecha types are the the super robot stuff. I'm not a big right. Gundam fan, so you know. But uh, I also, I mean, I've, I shouldn't say I'm not a Gundam fan. I've not, I've not watched enough Gundam to be a fan or not a fan. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, um, excuse me. So yeah, uh, but the the reason I, I sort of want to shy away from the sort of classic super robot thing is, um, it tends to the super robot shows tend to focus on one character, right? And their ro- their robot is special. Super special. So I guess we're sort yeah. of... Though, although it being a fantasy campaign... Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I mean, there's all, you can always go the, the Gundam Wing route. Where yeah. you're, you're, you have a team of super special robots. Right. But I entirely understand what you're saying. Doing less of the... Um, uh, what that... that uh, super special chosen one with, uh, with super special robot. Right. I mean... Yeah. I mean, the, the, you know, you, and, you know, the classic sort of, you know, Sentai team robot, super robot thing is involves combiners, yeah. and that's a giant kettle of fish I think we should avoid also. Yeah, I'm not sure how much I dig the idea of being, um... Being the left um, leg. Yeah, 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 I'm totally the left leg, are you kidding? <laughs> I'm totally hunk. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm probably the guy left back at base. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> watching on the monitor and shout, shouting things incredulously. Why are you two don't no, stop that? Why, why? Why are you doing it that way? There's more collateral damage this way. That's the thing we're trying to avoid. Avoid? <laughs> why aren't you idiots forming blazing swords from the get-go? I wanted to try out the vibro nunchucks. <laughs> It looked cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we've got that. How prevalent do we want the mecha to be? Is the real question. Um, I don't think you can have them not be a major part of, of the military. Okay. Like, sort of, but but rare enough. Sort of similar to um heavy cavalry. All right, I like that. I like that. So are the pilots knights or are they re- regular army? Just like elite armies. Oh, elite totally. Army. We they are totally knights. Okay, mecha so knights can... are the way to go. Okay, <laughs> they're mecha knights. Got it. I'm down with that. All right. So, all right. So they're they're that rare. Got it. Cool. Yeah, they're mecha knights. Mecha knights are cool. I approve. I mean, who doesn't want to be a mecha knight? Unless you're a mecha, unless you're a, a mecha marauder who has stolen his mech from a knight and then use that knight for a hat. I guess. I don't know. I'm a little unfocused tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that can be very good for brainstorming, honestly. Yes. Uh, all right. So we got so all the nations out there have their own sort of knightly orders of of mech pilots. Yes. Um, I think there should be a. Um, I think there should be like a, a central mecha guild that doesn't actually pilot the, pilot the mechs, but builds and maintains them. That and they have sort of a, a similar position uh, politically as the Catholic Church. 
Okay, that's possible. I was, I was going to ask about the the big thing is the question on that is. Okay, well the other question is how what how fantasy do we want to go? What type of fantasy do we want? I mean, like, do we want to just be humanocentric, or do we want to include other you know non-human races? Um, I think we're going to do other races. Okay. So um, we're, 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 I mean. We're going... We're going for we're going for more D and D ish races type thing or that yeah you know. okay that's cool I, I I don't have a problem with having your your a, a dwarf mecha knight I have a problem with an elf mecha knight because elves should be anywhere near mechs because mechs are too cool for elves but Eric you can t- but, I know I know you can totally envision an elven mecha right now I I am right now envisioning a, an elven mecha. And you hate it, don't you? And it well, looks well, like this, like the bastard spawn of a, a retribution of Syra uh, Mimradon and uh, an Eldar um, fucking uh, Wraith Titan. <laughs> <laughs> and it would look cool, too, and you know it. It is the thing all the Japanese fanboys would want to pilot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Now the other thing, the, I will say this also. I think that their the mecha should probably be not completely impervious to infantry, like normal, like normal troops should have things that can affect them, but not like yes, easy, but not easily, because yes, similar to to heavy cav exactly. Like, because um, if they're going to serve as heavy cav, they got to be you know. Oh. Like, like we don't oh. want the we don't want the effect of like in, it, we want them to be heavy cav, not tanks. Um, similar to how pikemen are often specialized for anti-heavy cav. Yep. We could have um, specialized anti-mech infantry. Yes, I like it. With um, I want them to have alchemical blasting pikes or some sort of um. Well, it might vary by nation too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like. I'm imagining like the the blasting pikes being a, a very human thing. Dwarves having some sort of like shock hammer. <laughs> I, I, honestly, the dwarves might just fall back on artillery. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, yeah. We can't mount these on the mechs; they're too heavy. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, I like the idea of avoiding the gunpowder route, though. Fair so enough. it'd be like some sort of like etheric magic artillery, or just firing giant fuck off ballistas at people. Ballistas work. Ballista, I like ballistas. Okay. I, li- I like the ballista idea. Okay, giant fuck off ballistas. There we yes. go. <laughs> They're. I. I, t- I totally. I actually agree with you on the avoiding gunpowder thing. Yeah. Because the, the problem with introducing gunpowder into any fantasy game is you sort of go, so why doesn't everyone have guns? Right. <laughs> oh, I agree. No, I agree. Yep. Yeah, you know. So, yeah, the dwarves, you know, you know catapults and ballista and shits. What the, the dwarves... Like, again, yeah. everyone has catapults. that you know, If they can land it on, like, uh, on, the, on the mecha, great. Yep. Which, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So the real question, so the, I, 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 my, ne- my next thing is, I think my gut feeling tells me that, in general, the mecha probably shouldn't have much in the way of range, range attacks. No, I'm thinking not. Um, uh, for the simple reason, then they, be, they again, then again, they sort of fall back to being being tanks. tanks. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. Mecha should probably be primarily a close combat thing, um, like big sweeping strikes with like. Swords and axes and, and the like, and, and maces yep. and, and the like. Yeah, absolutely. And some of them might even punch shit. Yeah, oh yeah, clearly. In fact, I have images of like the um, uh, of the orcs just like having these big, long, spiked flails whipping around. Okay, I can see that. Sure. All right. So, or you know, the bad guys. Orcs are the bad guys. They might be or, one of the bad guys. The orcs might be the bad guys. <laughs> they might be one of the bad guys. We'll definitely talk about the actual world itself in a bit, but uh, right. we're establishing more. So we've established they're humans, dwarves, elves, and orcs already. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, um, you know what I like the idea of? 
Yeah. Um, you know how we established the 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 engineers guild being sort of like the um, similar to the the Catholic Church for the humans uh, politically, sure. like um, having uh, the goblin tinkerers be that for the the uh, for the orcs and um, something stupid for the elves. And um, well, the dwarves don't need a separate en uh, entity for that. No, they don't. They're the dwarves. <laughs> They're the <What's> dwarves. <laughs> In fact, I've very much imagined the dwarves as like being a, a point of pride that each clan hold has their own engineers guild. <laughs> right. I, I can totally see that. All right. So, um, what powers the mechs is the question. That was what I was getting to. Um, because I almost feel like it should be something separate for each of the major races. I was thinking, here's the thing. I was thinking not, I was thinking, I was thinking it might be some sort of something that actually all that a resource, all of them are actually contesting. They're actually, mm. actually contesting each other over. Okay. I can see that. Like, um, some sort of. Some sort of magically resonant stone. And it's the, yep. the what's different is the way that they that they use it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, totally. Right. No, it's you know, it's yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. That's yeah, I I, I, I can see. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. Like um, I have images of like the the Elven Max like having the like the these. Having the stones like faceted, um, almost Eldar like, onto the, the surface of the thing with these conduits, uh, these glowing conduits inlaid into the armor, powering it. Um, the humans being like just a, a, a big chunk of it, like in the chest. Okay. The dwarves, of course, have theirs fully armored and whale deep and probably like has the pilot sitting on top of the fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like, I almost imagine the dwarf ones being like almost like, um, 40k gargants or or um or stompos that sort of like bell like shape with all the with all the, the interlocking heavy armor. So they look kind of goofy but are terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> all right, actually, what I was thinking with like you know so like you, you mentioning like they use the the, the magic for the, the the magic differently for each of them. Right. I was thinking like. With the dwarves, they the like for the dwarves, it ends up being like it ends up powering the heat source to power, like to create steam for for their steam powered mecha. Mm. And like the elves, they're just running directly off the mana off of it. Right. Because you know, because you know, elven whatever, elven huju. Uh, yeah. Like elven and, shenanigans. And tying back to the you know, what you're talking about the Catholic Church thing, the human ones could be the human stones could be the you, humans could use the stones as conduits for like. Divine magic to power their power their power their. Uh, I want to avoid divine magic with the okay. engineers guild. I want them to be entirely secular, and the only guys in the human things that are just totally like fact based, actual fucking science. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> and they just guard it jealously and hold it over people's heads for political power because jerks. <laughs> All right. Well, in that case, maybe it maybe they they found a way to draw electricity from it or something like that. Yes, yes, electricity. So they have like big Tesla coils sticking off. Yep. Uh, yeah, and, the, that and the, awesome. the orcs are the ones that are faith driven. Maybe. Um. No, I like the idea of the orcs having stolen the idea from uh, from the dwarves. Okay. It's just that the uh, the while the dwarves are um, use it as a direct power source. The orcs have much longer um, lifespan on theirs because they just use it to start up an actual fucking steam engine. <laughs> Where it's like coal and shit. It's a starter for their coal engines. Okay. Or maybe not. I don't know. Well, the problem with it... The more I think about that, the, the dumber it is. Yeah, that's... The problem is that, like, well, yeah, but they could just use fire for that. If it's cool. Yeah. Um... I like I like the I I mean I do like the idea of them having so like I, I'm okay with it them using steam engines also. It's right. Just they're not they're, theirs aren't as like they're not they're not as good at it because you know. Right. Because they're not dwarves. They're not they're not as good at engineering as dwarves are because you know that's what the dwarves do. 
But maybe they um, found some. You know what? I'm thinking the goblins are actually really good at um, weapon systems. Okay. Sure. Like they they, they kind of suck at at actual if efficiency. Like um, I like the idea of like there being a big red button in the cockpit that you can blow half your load for it, like uh, maybe some sort of um, sudden PBOAOE attack. Maybe. And, and that's what makes the, the orcs so terrifying, is they, they hit hard, they blow everything the fuck up, grab what, sur what survives, and then they leave. <laughs> Before their juice runs out. <laughs> I was... That, that's possible. I was, I was almost thinking, like, they actually might have figured out a way to use, like, again, not efficient, but... And that's sort of, you know, sort of not efficient, but power sort of thing. Maybe their mechs are just faster than most people's. Mm. Yeah, keeping the whole rating thing. Yeah. So like that, so you know, yeah, that that could work, or maybe the, it could be that like the orc stuff is sort of a hybrid of you know combined using the mat. Like the reason they they don't have as much endurance off of theirs is that they they have sort of a weird hybrid of steam and just directly magically powering their shit. Like sort of a weird hybrid of the elven and, right. and, and dwarven sort of techniques. No, because I like the idea of the elves being the only ones being able to tap directly into it. So what about a hybridization of the human and dwarven techniques? That could work, too. Um, that, that way, you've got... Um, you've got the, 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 the gem power... The gem power is the steam engine, which in turn powers a turbine that, uh, that drives it electrically. Okay. I, I could see... I can see that, yeah. Um, th which um, allows for catastrophic failures on occasion. Because <laughs> <laughs> the last thing you want is for the boiler to blow all over your fucking um, turbine. Uh, electrical turbine. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, yeah. So like, the, like the goblin, the goblin, like engineers discovered that, like you know, you could generate electricity via. Like, accidentally discovered it, like, with an engine, like, spinning. Yeah. They created some and Totally and accidental, not meant on purpose, but holy shit, this works. <laughs> Wait, that that looks like, those look like the miniature lightning bolts. Wait a minute. Have we seen those? Oh, it's the not... human thing. Oh, right. We could, we have no idea how they do it, um, how the dwarves actually power it directly with the steam. But we can kind of figure out how the, the humans do it with their electric, but we don't know how to produce the electricity. But we can make the steam drive the turbine that gives us the electricity. <laughs> I like that. That's good. That's good. <laughs> that works. That works. All right. Which actually, interestingly, would mean, like, because of the, the, this, I think the, the goblins would hold sort of a lot more sort of sway and respect amongst the orcs than they normally would. Oh yeah! Oh, absolutely. Like uh, I like the idea of the the um, like I said the the um, you have that that sort of like um, the engineers guild for the human kingdoms, and you have the the goblin the goblins uh, the united goblin tribes do in the exact same position for the uh, for the orcs. Right. Like normally, so yeah, like, unskilled like, goblins still get used as cannon fodder, but that's because the goblins fucking sell them into it. It's like, dude, you can't wreck a turbine with shit. Get on, get on the line. <laughs> Aww. But I'm squishy. Well, you should have you should have studied hard, you should have studied engineering harder then. All right. Well, we got a, we got a little bit of a crux. We got a little bit of a thing there. Um, yeah. So, one important thing is we've got the sort of the the resource the the. I, I I think it probably is a crystal of some sort. Just because yeah, of the way you my, my, it. yeah, crystal makes sense. I guess see, we could do um. No, I was going to su suggest dragon stones, but then it was like, nope, nope, that's Excalonia again. <laughs> yep. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. So that, that's sort of we, – we've established how the mechs work and, you know. Right. Only the, you know, the like for the humans it very much definitively is like the, like the ones who pilot the mecha are definitively knightly orders. Yes. Like, I, that, there's like no question about that. I like the idea of everyone having sort of the an equivalent of knightly orders. Oh, sure. Because they, yeah, they are rare and difficult to maintain. And, and probably hard to drop pilot. Yeah. Like they require a lot of training. Like you do not give that to your scrubs. <laughs> yeah, and so, so like you have like um, you have knightly orders or um, like I imagine the elves at some sort of like weird monastic monastic thing. Okay, I, I like the monastic it being a weird sort of monastic order type thing for the elves. Sure. Yeah. Um. Oh, that's actually the secret to how the elf ones work. They actually the the pilot communes with the stone. Okay, I like it. I like that's it. why it's a monastic order because it requires a a, um, a a degree of zenning with uh, with the device to make it work properly. That's why no one's figured out how the elves work. No one's figured out how to zen with the stone. Right. <laughs> okay, I like it. I like it. That works. Uh, okay, for the. And for the orcs, it's, you know, the classic, you know, well, again, it it requires skill and training. And... But there's a bit of the, the uh, uh, I'm the biggest kind of deal. Sure. I absolutely. like the, the, the orcs not really having bloodlines, but being very, um, yeah, I, I kind of a brutal uh, meritocracy. Yes. Like, like they, they look at the, um, all the, the traditions of the dwarves and the, the bloodlines uh, of the... Uh, of the humans and the the general weirdness of the elves go that's fucking stupid <laughs> just give it to the best guys <laughs> right absolutely <laughs> the best guy being the guy who could beat you up and take your mech and make it work <laughs> <laughs> like it's a brutal meritocracy <laughs> Right, so we have these knightly orders, uh, and the dwarves. It, I'm, I'm thinking it's, it's, it's probably a clan base, probably. Uh, yeah, yeah, almost certainly. Like there are clans who, who have tradition, who, who have traditionally been, been, you know, you know, the, you know, who are actually, it's probably tied in with the clans who actually build the things. Yeah, honestly, yeah, because you know the clans who built the things first would have basically said, okay, well. We're not handing these over to the other clans who don't know who, who we don't who, who didn't build these things to test them out. Actually, yeah, I like the idea of the the, the dwarf engineers and the dwarf uh, mech knights being part of the same organization, just different different branches, um, different branches of it. Right. Yeah, Actually, I really like the idea of the dwarves having a kind of. Um, almost like a partnership. Like, you have the knight that drives the mech, and you have the engineer that maintains it. And it's considered a gigantic taboo for one to step on the other's toes. Right. But they're very much, like, linked at the hip. <sighs> yeah, absolutely. And they are completely and utterly equals. Yes. Because one can't do the, the, its job without the other. Right. It's like, no, I wouldn't... What do you mean? I'm, my, I'm, I'm not superior to my engineer. My, the engin my engineer is, is... We are the... The engineer are, is critical to making this thing work. work. That's stupid. This is not my mech. It is our mech. Why? I'm the engineer. Why would I have any control over the knight? Battle is his job. <laughs> Using the mech most efficiently is his job. I have right. no idea how to do that. I just maintain the damn thing. <laughs> Like, I know the I know the theory of how to do it, but he's the one who's trained to do it. Duh. <laughs> I've spent my, I've spent my life learning how to fix things. He spent his life learning how to drive the thing. And it's our mech. That's just the way it is. Yep. Becoming a pair that's dispossessed amongst the dwarves is a gigantic like shame on the clan kind of deal. Yeah. Like, like losing your mech and not dying trying to recover it is just... The mech comes back even if neither of you do. Right. <laughs> I 
And I like the idea of that being a relatively recent thing because that's how the orcs figured their shit out. Right. That's good. That's good. Like the fact that orcs have mech at all is something is like a big blight on. Yeah, like, a big it, it blight was one. On, it was yeah. one like one particular clan. Like, mm. Lost several of their mechs, and like they are now shunned. Like that entire clan is now shunned by the rest of them. Yes, they have fallen completely out of dis disfavor, and are no longer getting like, like they no longer get their, their like get choice like like get like regular shipments of of the crystal. They're giant pariahs, and um, I like the idea of them being like just these giant pariahs, and that when if you play a dwarf mech uh, mech knight slash engineer, that's your default clan. They're the ones also that are forced to deal the most with the outside world. Interesting. So, so that that clan's got sort of a a, a weird possession where no one's allowed or supposed to talk to them, but they're also the the best link for um the best resource for acquiring uh, new ideas and outside trade. <laughs> Because okay. they're like, fine, you guys don't want to talk to us? Fine, we'll talk to everybody else. <laughs> and now we're positioned at both as um, a, a minor mecha house and as the major trading guild. <laughs> and the source of most, of most of the dwarven diplomats. Because, of course, they're dwarven diplomats to both the elves and the, and the humans. Yeah, of course. And not to the orcs. <laughs> No, I I like the idea of the, of the orcs being so completely fractionalized that there are some clans that have alliances with the elves, some that have alliances with the dwarves, some that have alliances with various with, with the the human kingdoms. But the only unifying factor are, is the Goblin Tinkerers Guild. <laughs> okay, I can I can work with that. I I could work with that. Yep. And, and um, yeah. So. You, you listen to the Goblin's Tinkerer's Guild, but the Goblin's Tinker Guild really only cares about making sure they get stuff to tinker with. <laughs> right. Okay, I, that works. And there's actually, there often are a bit, a bit like a bit of infighting about like, you know, like a, you know, one of the, one of the, one of the orc, tri one of the orc tribes knights decide they want to go off and raid, like, you know, Raid for crystals and shit in in certain this kingdom's human kingdom's territory, and the other orc, one of the orcs, the tribes that are aligned with that kingdom are like, no, that'll actually fuck up our alliance with the humans there. Don't do that. <laughs> I like the idea of like orc mercenary bands, <laughs> actually, like okay. they will hire themselves out. So like, you guys don't have knights, but we've got three mechs. They can totally cover your shit till your knights get back for money and crystals. Yeah, I like it. I, I suspect they're mercenary bands for for most of them, honestly. Yeah, but the I, I like the idea of the orcs having the uh, having their rep for being mercenaries, like they're they're, they're the most common actually, ones. That's actually that's actually an interesting thought. The orcs aren't really antagonistic per se; they're actually just generally mercs. They'll fight anybody for for any they'll fight anybody. For, yes. For pay. Yes, I like that idea. So it's not and, they're... and their first loyalty is to the Tinkerer's Guild because the Tinkerer's Guild keeps them in, gives them the, the ability to actually fight. Yep. And it's something the Tinkerer's Guild is aware that they have, but rarely uses because they don't want a rebellion. <laughs> right. So yeah, like like seriously, like the like for like for a long time the or, or you know orcs were were, were mercs and did fighting, and then like the development of Mecha came along, and like mm. the orc mercs are all like, the fuck do we do now? Like, we can't compete with that! <laughs> what the fuck? I mean... We even tried shooting our own people at it via catapult, and it didn't work. That's <laughs> a little too GW orcs, but... Yeah. <laughs> we tried all sorts of shit, and it just, like, yeah, we, we could occasionally take down a mech here or there. Fuck, what do we do? And, like, some goblins came and said, okay, look, if you got Like, the goblin tinkers came up to them and said, okay, look, it'll be costly... But if we, you guys can find some way to get us a significant sample of mecha technology from somebody, we'll be able to. We'll try to reverse engineer it and build mechs for you guys. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And so the orcs basically came up, like, and the, so the orcs came with a big plan, and they that's where they've gotten the big fight with the, the dwarf, that dwarven clan. Right. 
because the 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 orcs started like uh, like all the the various orc merc guilds like or, or clans started uh concerted raids raids into the um in the dwarven uh, areas to draw out their mech knights and then set up an ambush to capture several of them. Right. <laughs> it's actually a gig- that's why there's that the um, that dwarven clan is so um so maligned. Not only did they give the orcs um accidentally give the orcs uh, mech technology, but they're outsmarted by orcs. And dwarves are always going to be dwarves. They're always going to be like, but of course they're the smartest and most intelligent. <laughs> And you got outsmarted by filthy green skins. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I like it. I like it. So how did they get the samples of the human tech? Did they d- Probably a similar deal. Possibly. Uh, except there, they, there, there's not that giant taboo with the... Um... Yeah, it's, it's a little like... Because, because, the because the human kingdoms are more factionalized than the dwarves. There was less of that. Fuck you! You don't, you can't hang out with us officially anymore. Oh, I I I also might think it's also more of a case of also a case of yeah, we got hoodwinked by the orcs. That happens. <laughs> yeah, they're not yeah. the orcs. Despite anybody's, like, despite what the dwarves might think, or dwarves or elves might think, are a lot smarter than than, than the dwarves and elves think they are. Yes. Well, I think in the case of the dwarves and elves, it's just a, a, a case of, of... But if we admit that orcs are, are as smart as us, then that means we're not smarter than the orcs, and that's, that completely messes with our worldview, so clearly we're smarter. Doesn't matter. We're thinking of looking at like, okay, look, they are the best raiders out there. We've known this for ages. They've demonstrated over and over again. They just did what they always do. And did it well. And it cost them a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. I, I love the idea that they tried it with the elves. Except um, they couldn't get the elven... Because they couldn't send with the stone, they couldn't get it to work. And the elves totally covered up. As far as anyone else knows, it never happened. Right. <laughs> but the orcs and the elves both know. <laughs> <laughs> so the orcs have this el- and, like, have the elven tech lying around going... The goblins look at this like, the fuck is this? <laughs> There's, what? How, this doesn't make any goddamn sense. Okay, we can see how the mechanics work, but how do you get power into it? That just, they just plug the stone in there and that's it? That, how, how does it turn on? <laughs> this isn't mechanical. What? Like they're mecha- like they're like mechanics here and here and here, but there's no. How does the power transfer? What? Where is the power generator? How do they? What? <laughs> like these fucking things literally run on magic. That's that's impossible. <laughs> All right, maybe it's possible. You shaman, see if you can figure out how this thing how the how the stupid mech thing transfers magical energy to power itself. Skaboom! Okay, we figured out that didn't work. <laughs> Alright, you shaman, do this. Fuck no! <laughs> Screw you, did you just see what happened to Bob? <laughs> we have a limited number of shaman, don't we? Quick, yeah. start training more shaman. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> we are not training shaman to have them explode. <laughs> Give us a working theory that 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 might work, then we'll consider it. But but you guys are the ones who do the magic. Yeah, fuck off. <laughs> I also like the idea that shaman is just a, a generic term for anyone that uses magic. Uh, yeah. amongst oh the yeah, Orcs absolutely, goblins. absolutely. It's like doesn't matter how where the the actual source for your magic is. Like, no, you're a shaman. No, I'm a wizard. You're a shaman. You, no, no, no. You see, shamans draw their power from. Fuck you, you're a shaman. <laughs> and it's entirely an orc thing. Yeah. The orcs are just like, look, we don't have time to c- debate with you on the on the semantics of this bullshit. We're picking one title. Most of you are, most of you are to identified yourself as shaman. You're all shaman. Okay. 
<laughs> I like the idea of it causing like the being such like a, a an insult to be called a shaman by anyone other than an orc amongst the other races. <laughs> It's like no, I'm not a shaman. I am a, uh, I am a, a divinely inspired priest. You're a shaman. Shut up. I am a sorcerer. I draw directly from the aether. You're a shaman. Shut up. The really funny thing is, that, like, for the orcs in many ways, it probably is actually almost a term of respect. And also, that was yes. Like to be called a shaman is a term of respect for an orc. It's an insult for everybody by everybody else. Right. No, you use magic. That is cool. I don't care where you, how you use the magic. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So we got that. Um, what else? All right, so we got we've got a fair bit of stuff on how like the orcs and goblins work, and some bits about the dwarves. Right. Uh. All right, so the re- and we've got some relationship between like all right. So the question is then, so what's the, what is the relationship between the 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 knights and the engineers guild for the humans? Um, I kind of imagine it being kind of strained, honestly. Okay, I like it because both sides are trying to because it's so typically the thing in, in human politics. Whatever world you're in, both sides are trying to gain the upper hand on the other. Okay, I like but it. Not overtly. Because <laughs> the like, knights need the engineers, and the engineers need the knights. Because they sure as hell. The last time we tried, uh, like I had, like the idea of the engineers having their own sort of equivalent of knights templar, but they're very much just for show and can't actually do the job that an actual knight can do. Yeah, they just don't have time to. They don't have the access to the tr- to the, to the people to do the tra- proper training. Right, they don't have access to the people to do the proper training, and they don't have the actual like, they don't have veterans to do um to, right to do the training, and it very much is a thing that takes a long time to learn. Right, and anyone worth their assault in the engineers guild wants to learn how to fucking make mechs, not drive the damn things. Right, humans just don't live long enough to be able to do both. <laughs> right, and the. The, like and sort of the like I, I imagine that like a lot some of the night orders are desperately trying to trying to find ways to learn how to make their own mecha and like st- like get that get that information out of yeah the and, and woo uh, and woo um ang- uh, uh, disgruntled engineers away from the guild right and, and so just far, like it's... the and just like the guilds trying to woo um disgruntled knights away from their orders. So they have veterans to do the trading, and yeah, but it's at the same time, and there is spies going back and forth and sabotage, and it's yeah, <laughs> all 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 the while trying desperately to make sure that the kings, none of the kings notices, none of the rulers notices going on. Yes, all the while presenting a, a, a united front. Right, it's uh, like like smile and make nice and hide the dagger behind your back kind of uh, relationship. Like I suspect, like like most like above a certain point, like the noble families are are above this. Like yes, like there are probably like some of the no like there. Are, I I imagine there are a couple of, like the like the higher up noble families who have their own certain knightly orders who would not stoop to what the other knightly orders are doing. Right. They're like no, that is be- we we must present a united front to the to the world. Therefore, we will work hand in hand with the engineers. Engineers guild. The engineers guild is like. We're never going to be able to get anyone away from them, are we? Yeah, yeah. There, are, there, are, um, <laughs> there are a couple like just completely incorruptible knightly orders out there, like goddamn friggin' like paladins and robots. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they like these years have like don't, like never like gave up trying ages ago with them. They're like, nope. Right. And, and to get uh, I. <sighs> Like, not only are these guys incorruptible, but they're also, like, have a reputation for being the best. Right. Which is doubly infuriating. Yes. I, and here's the thing that probably drives, like, both the Knightly Orders and the Engineers Guild nuts, is the human mercs out there. Like, most of the disgruntled guys end up joining mercenary units. Yes. 
Yeah, because I, I like the idea of like part of it's true, part of it's rumors spread around by by their own side, but like if you end up being kicked out, don't go to them. The terrible things they'll do to you to learn to get your knowledge. Right. Like they're prompt and, and some of it's Tortures. most of it's rumors, but there are enough actual instances of people being tortured to death trying to get them to comply by both sides. <laughs> right. But also just like the, the you know, it, most of like most of the you know the knights who get kicked out aren't really experienced enough to be to be useful for training. And most right. of the years kicked out haven't like gotten to the point where they can build stuff. They just know how to right. fix they, stuff. They can just do ma- uh, maintenance. Like they're not a fixed like, ship, you know, but like you know, build, build, like actually building the you know, the, the 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 conduct the, the magical conductors and such. Like, I don't know how to do that. I don't know right. how to make sure the make sure how, how to fix the shit. And like me, uh, or like because of like major personality issues, so they will be terrible at teaching other people how to do right, shit. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. I like it. You know, and sometimes the people who get kicked out go off and found, the, found their own branch of the engineers guild somewhere else. Yeah. And the engineers guild. Yeah, like, goes, like there will be like other like engineer guilds that pop out someplace, and sometimes there'll be like new uh, new knightly orders. New knightly orders tend to stick around longer than new engineers guilds because they tend to get uh, reabsorbed in the major engineers yeah, guild. They wait for the disgruntled guys to basically retire and then absorb them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like like your 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 pissed off masters go fuck off and start their own guild with blackjack and hookers, and then when eventually they they die or get sick of, of doing stuff with subpar parts, the guild just goes and like with open arms brings in all their their journeymen and apprentices. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and the few situations that doesn't happen, they eventually form a working relationship with them. Right. They say, okay, look, we'll we'll we will. We will stop black blackballing you, but you have to swear you have to follow these rules. And you yeah, and then a generation or two later, they just end up like being just parts of the guild. Basically, yeah. And Azina brings up a point in the chat that like the mecha are, pro- I imagine that there are probably some mecha that are designed by each of the factions as siege haulers. But mm. Those are definitely not the ones that, that they're definitely not the combat units being piloted by the knights, because. You know, that would be wrong. There's right. a difference between a war horse and a Clydesdale. <laughs> <laughs> one's a draft horse, one's a war horse. They're different. Clearly. Well, like that that's actually like um where where uh where the engineers get most of their, their actual pilots it is uh the, the siege haulers. Yes, I like that. Actually, most. It's like, of the... yeah, yeah, I can, I can make this tractor do, uh, do whatever you want. I have no idea how to pilot a freaking uh, jet fighter. <laughs> there are too many buttons. What does this do? Uh, I, I could get it from point A to point B. Don't, don't ask me to fight in it. <laughs> well, if you teach our young guys how to do that, maybe they can figure out how to fight in them. Uh, I guess. Sure, sure. Sure, yeah, I can totally do that. So, sir, what does this button do? That, um, that, that kills you. Don't push that button. You don't actually know, do you? Nope, not a clue. Not really. <laughs> dude, I'm a, I pilot, I pilot a tractor truck, okay, dude? I don't know what these fancy things do. I'm here, I'm here to teach you how to drive the damn thing. I have no idea what these levers do. <laughs> so many different levers and dials and cranks and knobs. <laughs> okay. Or they might know how to do them, but there's such a, a knack to doing it. They really just they can they can do the kata, but as soon as they they are required to actually use it in combat, they end up falling flat on their face. <laughs> <laughs> Like, they do okay for, like, against, like, against normal troops, they're fine. The second yeah. actual, like, mech pilot shows up, they're fucked. Yes. It's like the difference between a uh, a tournament fighter and a street fighter. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're playing for points, good for you. 
Um, I am dating you with this uh, chair. <laughs> Okay, that's I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Um, let's see, what else do we need? So, you know, we got most of our classic... Oh, we got to talk about the elves. Yes, the elves. Um, all right, so we established the elf pilots are a monastic order. Right. Um, I like the idea that the elves sort of... Okay, so the elves that like the elves had long known about this particular material, the, the, this this crystal, and use it to for for using magic just in general, but like not ostentatiously. Mm. Like that's how they like that's how they're like the, it's like one of their the major power sources for like one of the reasons their 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 war mages have always been good, so much more effective than a lot of other people's is because you know they no one knew, knew knows this, but like they had these crystals that they could use to basically draw magic draw magic from and didn't wear themselves out as quickly. Mm. And then they saw like you know, the other like the dwarves like unleash their mecha, and they're like, "Wait, what? How are those things? What?" And then the humans release. There's like, "Wait, what? Okay, we can't like we can't compete with those as is." It's like the elves didn't actually they they weren't the first on the field with, with mecha. Yeah, I like the idea of them being like the second to last. Yeah, like, like they'd only had a a, a, a functional um, mecha core. For about a generation, for the 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 three great orc raids, right. I like that, which is one of the reasons the orcs were succe- were able to successfully take the elven mecha, right? Because they were still working out their um their tactics and shit. Like so, the el- the orcs had li- had much fewer losses against the elves than any other three. Like it was a yes. it was actually like a curb stomp for the orcs. Which is why the elves are especially... one of the reasons why the elves cover it up. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> that was like that never happened. Nope. I actually, like the idea of there being no survivors, and they the elves piece together what happened from uh, using forensic science at the ba- battlefield forensics. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yep. What do you mean we lost all dozen of uh, uh, of our mechs? Well, uh, according to the seers and what we've been able to piece together, it was an it was an orcish raid, and they were slain to a man. What? <laughs> Where are the leftover mechs? The orcs took them. What? <laughs> okay, no one speak of this again. <laughs> this never happened. Do you understand? Well, I mean, if we're going to figure out how to, you know... Per the happy future, we'll talk about it. It never. No, no, no. I don't mean amongst uh, amongst you people and like the, amongst the 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 monks and you guys. I mean, outside this room, this never happened. <laughs> of course, you talk about the idea of there be like this grizzled old um orc who's lived way past his prime, still clutches to his mechs. And you know, I was part of the raiding party on the elves. There was no raiding party on the elves. <laughs> Yes, there was. I was there. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> All right, but so the question is: so, so, what's the how how distinct is the is what's the sort of connection between the the elves who make the mecha and the ones who pilot it? Is it the same monastic order? Maybe. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Be- I like it being the same monastic order. Like uh, for the elves, like the pilots also do their own maintenance because they're they're trained yes. to do that. And um, and uh, because of the 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 way the zetting with the crystal works, like another pilot can't do maintenance on it. Right, on they, another... they, it's a it's a bond between you and your mech. Yeah, there's an actual it's, magical bond. That, that's the that's where you get your super robot shit is with the elves. Yes, well, kind of. I mean, it like, doesn't like it's. It's basically that your mech, like your mech, is not actually mechanically, like physically different from that mech over there. But right. You can't pilot his mech, and he can't pilot yours. Right. The only way to do it is to completely reset the Chris, uh, the, the mech. Right. And um, then we have to train up the mech again because the, I like the idea of the mechs being trained up for the elves. Right. Sure. Absolutely. Like you can wipe a mech for a new pilot, but then. 
So it's a lot like, um, it's a lot like Cortexes and war, war catchers for in Iron Kingdom. Yes, yes, exactly. Like, okay, I like that. Yes, that works. That works a lot, actually. <laughs> and that further explains why the why the why the orcs and goblins cannot get the, the could not get them to work. Right. Like, <laughs> even they're like able to f figure out like the the actual process. They're like, but we still can't make it work. Why can't we make it work? Because they're not bound to the crystal, and they they don't. <laughs> That's great. And there's no fucking way an elf will ever tell them. Yeah. Because outside of the monastic order, it's not really known. Like, there's, there's like, knowing the theory. Like, I know the theory as to how a cathode ray two works, but I can't teach someone how to make one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so there's a point of conflict for all of them in in that there, yeah. there's a limited there, there, as far as everyone can tell there there are there's it's a, it's a rare resource. Yes. And it's very clear that you you need this shit. And again, for a long time the only people who really cared about it were the elves. Right. And now the elves are the, the, part of the reason the elves are like like the, like the elves notice like everybody's accumulating this shit. Why? Wait, what are those ro what are those stupid mechanical those the mechanical things? How are they powering those? Like I can see they've got like they're venting steam. But they're, like okay, well, I guess maybe coal but there're no coal furnaces. What? <laughs> okay, what the fuck is with those Why is there lightning bolts coming off those human robot things? I Oh god damn it. <laughs> That's why they've been accumulating the crystal. Shit. All right, time to make our own. <laughs> How do we do this? All right, so uh... actually, you know what? I really like the idea of the the uh, the Elven Monastic Order growing out of a um, a, a uh, artificer slash uh, alchemy guild. Okay. Um, I, possibly they, like they, they were the ones that used the, the the crystals the most, and they're the ones that also developed the mechs and became the pilots. Right. I actually maybe it's like a partnership between that and like an already existing monastic order, mm. because like the monastic order were the ones who taught the the like they still couldn't for like they couldn't get the mechs like they 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 got things to work but they couldn't make them work fluidly because they didn't really right. have that sort of the, the, the this sort of mental discipline to do it. And so like okay, who do we know has mental discipline? The monks have the those monks know are all about mental discipline. We're bringing them yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, like uh, like the elves have an equivalent of like the Shaolin. Right. So they approach the the, the pointy eared Shaolin. <laughs> and they're like, honored honored revered elder, we've got we we have a proposition for you. We would like to learn your ways. And that cha and it ended up changing the attitudes of both the the the, the monks and the and the and the uh, the, uh, the the guilds. Hmm. So and they and they they actually have merged into one order. Yes. Um, I also like the idea of the elves being the the only like united force. Yes. Oh, absolutely. They, yes. Not like elven culture is a is a it's fairly it, is a monolithic culture. Like they. Oh, well, they, monolithic's um, a better term for that. Yes. Hmm? Monolithic's a better term. I was, I was going to say homogenous, but monolithic's better. I like that. Yeah. Because like, you'll have variations depending on, on the uh, uh, on on the region, but like they all owe, owe fealty to the their, their king. They all um, follow more or less the same traditions, with only slight variations between um, what you call it between regions. Yeah, they've got there is an elven high king. Yeah. Like there might nominally be, there's like nominally a high king of the of for humanity and and like you know a clan chief like a a, a, a you know a high you know high chieftain for the dwar for the for the dwarven kingdoms or what mm. have you high king, but like that's like it's not a nearly as unifying for, as it would be for the elves. Yeah, as it is for the elves, it's like yes, he is the high king. We pay taxes to him. <laughs> he gets to. Basically, talk to the outside world for us, <laughs> and we listen to him usually. I mean, except when we, we decide he's being dumb. We we listen to him. we always listen to him, and if he gives direct orders, we totally listen to them. 
Yeah, he's got the power to actually give orders, but it's tradition that he doesn't. <laughs> like, there's a council of like, like the 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 lesser kings all have like a council that actually make the uh, the actual dis decision makers. And the, yeah. the high king has a seat on the council, but it's. Yeah, and, and the the only reason that this um, facade of unity and it's very much a facade of unity uh, for both the dwarves and, and the humans is because well, there's other shit out there. Right. Well, they're the orc. They're the orcs. They're the elves. They're the goddamn humans or dwarves, whichever. Right. And I like the idea of there being other threats out there. Oh, sure, like, absolutely. Um, Like, when dragons show up, it's like a fucking, like, it's a goddamn natural disaster type of situation. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, there, there are mo definitely, like, monsters and such that are threats to, to, to the mecha. Like, that's yeah. part of the reason I don't want the, I, I think the mecha shouldn't be too too huge. Right. Because, like, you know, again, I, we, it, like, it should be dialed back to the point where, again, they should feel like knights and not, you know. Right. So, like, an individual mecha, like, you like, you know, a unit of mecha, that, like, runs into a dragon, they're like, oh, we're in trouble. <laughs> did anyone remember their pikes? No. Bob, why did you forget the pikes? Because you told me to bring the swords. If we're going up against infantry, dude. <laughs> right, and there are probably are other, like, you know, n nasty gribblies out there that can, you know... Sure. And uh, so Captain Moog in the chat it says, uh, maybe some literal ghost in the shell type things? If the elves can bond to mechs, maybe they, they can bond... Ghost spirits good too. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like that idea. Like, the um, the elves actually have a ghost legion uh, uh, of pilots who who have died but bonded to their suits. Yeah, but, like, I, that could happen to other, other, to other races, too. So, like, there are, like, there are, like, tales of haunted, like, human mecha and such. Right. <laughs> Doesn't happen very often. Uh, I love the idea of, like, the, um... Uh, of uh, there being like a, a, a an orcish like uh, a merc company that's particularly well respected, but is incredibly uh, um, erratic in how they'll behave. Like they're really, really good at their job as long as they're focused on their job. It's because each of them has a a, a dead warrior bonded to their mech. <laughs> <laughs> so it's occasionally as to who's actually in charge at the moment. <laughs> Oh, okay. So each 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 mech pilot has a mech that has a, a dead pilot bonded to it. Okay. Yeah. See, I was thinking there wouldn't be very many of the. There probably aren't very many orc mechs that that it happened to because of the you know, when it happens, they tend to be you know, because of the, the sort of you know, combustible nature of orc mecha. They yeah, that's true. They tend to explode. <laughs> they tend like <laughs> a spirit might like bond to it and then like you know, boom. <laughs> But like there are a few of them that do exist. And, like there's this one merc yeah. company that 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 met, like that have managed to you know stabilize, like managed to like keep their keep the, the spirits like from overdriving the mechs too badly. Right. So they're they're really really good as long as they can focus, but they tend to be erratic because the um occasionally the uh, the, the bonded spirit will go. You know what? This is dumb. These guys are totally going to cheat you. They are not going to cheat us. They're going to cheat you. They cheated me. Those are different guys. No, they are the same guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, like th yeah, naturally there got to be some other other threats though. I agree with you on that point. Um, mm. And not just like individual large monsters. I yeah. Mean... Okay. Here's a thought. So one of the one of the one of the, the sort of reasons the the dwarves sort of invented their mech and why the humans were so quick on their heels is like out like there are like you know there are tribes of like ogres and shit mm. who are a big threat and like giants yes who are like it's like yes like our infantry just like yeah we've got infantry and all this stuff but like dear, like they're huge. It's like we need something that we can stand up to these things in a fight. So like you can have like a fight between like an ogre in full battle armor with like a big axe against a, a mecha knight. Yeah. Yeah, I like that idea. 
So like the 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 giant the giants like like they're like the giant kingdoms. They don't bother with mecha because they've got they've got they've got their ogre shock troops, and if they really need to, they can send out they can send one of their one like a, a giant knight out on their own. Right. Yeah, I like that idea a lot. The giants are the big are like the big are like the big bads. The, the big unit, yeah, the big threat that um that unifies, the, not unifies that the, the big overall threat right. to the to the various kingdoms. Which is not necessarily preclude orcs from occasionally working for them. Well, no, they're the or, a, a lot of the orcs will work for anybody as long as they pay. <laughs> right now, the giants don't hire them often because why? Well, sometimes even giants want deniability. Right, well, that, and that's the point. It's like, hmm, we don't want. To yeah, I like the idea of like frost giants, like um. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking along those lines. Like like frost giants with these like legion of, uh, of um. Ogres and and Formori, and they only like occasionally deign to take the battle, take the field themselves. Right, exactly. But like, it's a big deal when they do. Like when a giant shows up, it's like, oh, fu-. it's you know, it's on the par with like, oh, it's a dragon, oh, it's a giant. Well, fuck. Right. Like, yeah, an individual knight is a, is you know basically a match for an ogre and uh, like a well trained ogre in full armor. You know, and, and you know, if you back the, the back the unit of knights up with with battle mages, they can handle like some of the Fomori and their weird shit. Yep. But it's like, oh dear God, it's an actual giant. Ah, uh, crap. I like the reason why the uh, a- and one of the reasons why the the giant kingdoms are uh, a threat is they don't actually acknowledge the rights to live of anyone but giants or their thralls. Right. And. Well, the other sapient races taste good. Sure, why not? Like that way, you can get the whole fee five o thumb thing going. Yeah, oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I totally rock with that. To- totally rock that. I like that a lot, actually. Okay, so we, that, that... <laughs> actually, the only reason that the um, that the orcs and goblins will work for them because they taste terrible. <laughs> they're the one race that the giant, but they're, they're they're not interested in becoming part of the giants, you know, hierarchy. Well, that the the um because well they're so small, the giants hardly even acknowledge them. They're like right. vermin, right? Like they get in, they get into everything, and they just they shit all over the place. They don't actually shit all over the place, but they shit all over the place and. They eat your food and just they're, they're useless for anything. Jeez. And the, and the orcs wouldn't want to join them anyways. Yeah. Well, because it's like, well... but Because the, the giants are gigantic fascist assholes right. to their thralls. Well, yeah, they're thralls. Yeah. So, you know, we want autonomy and freedom. Fuck that. And that's one of the big reasons why... Um, the, why well, the orcs are so factionalized? They're so goddamn individualist, uh, individualistic. <laughs> like the the idea of even fe- swearing fealty to a king that you don't see every day is just—it's dumb. That's dumb. I mean, what's to keep you? What's to keep him from screwing you later, or from you just to ignore him? <laughs> this thing called loyalty. Yeah, I've got loyalty. I've got loyalty to Bob over here. He watches my back on the battlefield. <laughs> I, we know we, we see each other every day. I mean, yeah, I know he's not going to pull anything. He's not going to pull, any, uh, and he knows I, I'm not going to pull anything. <laughs> but what if Bob had to go away for like a year? Well, fuck him. <laughs> yeah, fuck Bob. <laughs> Wait, no, no offense, Bob, but you'd say the same thing about me, right? Yeah, fuck you, dude. <laughs> see, I, I like actually, I really like the idea. Orcs are have like really strong group bonds. Um really strong small group bonds but like they have to see each other like at least once a week or it completely falls apart <laughs> Actually, like, oh hey that's Bob I wonder if Bob's going to kill me today I haven't seen him in a year <laughs> actually one of the uh, an interesting idea actually is like like if, if an orc ended up like palling around with, other, with like a group of humans, he'd be po- perfectly fine because like yeah, these I I can trust these guys. I've been working. Yeah, with them these are my troops. I see them every day. Yeah, <laughs> it's like one of the big misunderstandings. But they're at, orcs aren't particular. It's just you know, they've got good short term personal loyalty. It's just you know. Yeah. It's like yeah, t- 
Why, I, we work together all the time. Why would, why would I screw you over? Th that's stupid. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like that idea. Orcs have excellent short-term uh, short lo uh, loyalties and, and bond readily uh, as long as they see you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Which virtually nobody's really twigged to. It's right. the face of the goblins at this point. They're like, yes. Which is why there's always a goblin engineer um, hanging out with the, with the dwarf combat teams. Because the, 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 loyalty to the goblin engineer is de facto loyalty to the Tinkerer's Guild. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, the, the guild won't screw you over. I won't let them, man. <laughs> You can trust All me, right? right? We, we... Yeah, uh, okay, Chuck. Yeah, yeah, of course. Chuck Chuck will watch out for us. <sighs> but the goblins are also very careful about not pushing that too far. Because right. nothing, nothing pisses an orc off like betrayal. Right, exactly. <laughs> so they have to be really careful about how, how, how hard they push that. <laughs> I like that a lot, actually. <laughs> Like, you know, after, like, a lo long enough time, like, like, yeah, of course he, he might screw me over then. That, that's not betrayal. That's just business. That's just business. I haven't seen him in a year. Who knows what he's been up to? Who knows what kind of unsavory individuals he's been hanging out with? He's been hanging out with Bob again. <laughs> <laughs> or, or just in case, yeah, he's working for a different merc company now. They've got different goals. I mean, pff. yep. And, like, Sometimes if we, we to... We'll probably have to kill each other. That happens. <laughs> Nothing personal. That, that's business. That's that's fighting, man. We're on different sides of the fight. That's yeah. That's just how it works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like that. Let's see. Anything else we need for this? Like off, you know, that we want to. Let's see. Uh, we got the big threat. I like the Giants. The Giants are a good... Yeah, good I like the Giants a lot. It's almost always, like... It's almost always dragons or some extra-dimensional thing. I like it just being Giants. Yes, absolutely. Giants like, are, the, are, are the big, scary bad. I mean, like, dragons are out there, and they're a huge threat individually, because it's a fucking dragon. Right. But, like, they're not, like, they're not like a, a, a... Considered a major... A threat. They're considered a hazard. Right. A and dragon like, shows up, it's a natural disaster. And it's possible, also, with some dragons, you can negotiate with them. Yes, you can talk, you can have a conversation with a dragon. You can't talk to giants. Giant, you're just too small for the giant to give a fuck. Like, <laughs> like the, dragon, the dragon would probably eat you too, but, you know. But if you've got stuff that the dragon wants, you know. Right. And again, like, mechanites are, like, especially with the development of mechanites, the dragons are like, God, those things are annoying. Uh, I actually really like the idea of um, a good port of dragons. Those are really cool. Let's not break those and see what they do with them. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're almost certainly dragons who are like, this is interesting. But, also, but they're yeah. also like the more rapacious dragons who are like, ugh. It's such a pain in the ass to get the, get the meaty morsel out from inside those things. It's just not worth the trouble. <laughs> and they, they're pokey and they hurt. What do you want? <laughs> you don't want us to not, not, not attack and eat your flocks. Well, what do you give me in exchange? Oh. Right. Okay, that's shiny. <laughs> oh, and you, you know where I can get some, get some good food over there? All right, I I'm down. No, you know what? You guys need to leave. This is, this is my hangout now. Um, no, I'm, I'm living here now. I, I will, we can negotiate you, uh, your orderly removal uh, of your goods and, and families. But this is my hangout now. And that happens sometimes. Dragons that, will just show up and claim that some place is their new lair. <sighs> and, and you have to negotiate with them, or you have to drive them off. And it's always incredibly uh, costly to drive off a dragon. Right. Well, of course it is, because it's a fucking dragon. Right. Also, the, and like, yeah, uh, Zenith brings up, but what happens to a dragon versus a giant? Well, the problem is, like, a dragon versus a, dragon versus a giant, the dragon will probably win. But giants don't fight fair. No. Also, the giants have their legions of, of ogres and fomori underneath them. 
Why would I, why should I engage that flying lizard on my own? <laughs> That's stupid. Also, yes, le my legions, go destroy that dragon. I want its hide for a cape. Also, I haven't had dragon in a while. I want to eat. And it turns out that, like, oh, I really like the idea of, of dragon meat being um, kind of like fugu for um, for giants. For giants, it's got to be prepared properly, but because it's 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 deadly poisonous otherwise. Yes, <laughs> but it's a delicacy if done right. It's a delicacy if done right, and it's like something that like you might might be able to taste once in your lifetime because dragons are assholes and fight like bastards. Right. So yeah. Why would I fight against a dragon? Fight fair against a dragon? They don't fight fair. They fly <laughs> and breathe fire. <laughs> Cheating bastards, flying. Uh, but yeah, uh, the the other thing is how is, someone else brings up how proficient is ma is magic. Magic's still a thing, obviously. Yeah, and it's one of the things that like one of the ways you can you can cope with a knight, you know, is. You know, a you know a a good battle mage can at least can yeah. can affect them. Yeah, you've got you have war mages; they can do their thing. But you know, as a general rule of thumb, mages are fa still probably fairly rare. Yeah. They, they, um. Again, it's a whole degree of training involved. Right. It, it's a, there's a, it takes a lot of effort for someone to learn how to be a, to to learn magic. Yep. Especially to the level where you can actually be effective on a battlefield. Like, an individual mage, and they're probably mages who drive mecha, also, probably. Sure. Yeah, that's probably, like, the, the pinnacle of, of, of kick-assery is um, battle mages in... in uh, is battle knights, or, or mage knights. Which are exceedingly rare. Yes. Outside, like, like they're, they're mo probably the elves are, are the most common. Yep. Because, again, because the monastic order ties and etc., blah, blah, blah. Yep. Um, But yeah, it's stupendously, like, ridiculously rare. Because, you know, you... Okay. And it requires right. specialized mechs. Right. Well, again, it's it's a case of, okay, well, it takes it, it's, it takes a long time to learn how to be a, to be a proficient, bat, pro, proficient battle mage. It takes a long time to be a proficient knight. We can't do that s sequentially, because by the time they're out in the field, they're too old to do the, jo do the job as a knight. So they have to learn both of them simultaneously. Oh fuck! That's gonna yeah. be hard. <laughs> so it's it happens, but it's rare. I like yeah, it. and it's like only like the most kick ass bad at um individuals like legendary warriors kind of deal. I, I yeah, they pro they're probably some like you know like. Journeyman, like you know, apprentice mages who are like you know who are like. So the big thing about this is it, then casting this into a a campaign set into an actual RPG, mm. and what relative power level we're talking about. Uh, and you know, I, I basically you know it. This is a sort of setting where if the players are going to be like, if you're going to be, if the players are going to be playing, like if any of the players are going to be knights. Then we're talking like you can't be your typical beginning adventurer, right? Um, well, as I think it's something uh, a game system that requires a, a power level like beyond like Dungeons and Dragons, right? Well, like, it, like you'd be start like you'd be starting at like D and D equivalent of like third or f third or fifth level, at, le at least, probably higher. Yeah, we're not talking like beginning adventurers in like traditional like D and D, right? So yeah, uh... so yeah, I think yeah. So like you know, I we so we you would have room for like one of the players to be a mage knight, but like it would have to be relatively balanced with someone who's not. So like they're not like a fully fledged like they haven't developed their ability to combine the two. To the level like the legendary mage knights do, they're they, right. like they're on that path. But like, I don't want to like you know as much as I like the idea of like mage knights being. It's not so much mage knights are significantly more powerful than 
like a traditional knight or a traditional mage. It's more they've got that sort of it, it's more flexi a more flexibility thing. Yeah. And even then, like there are things like a, a a pure mage on the battlefield can do that a mage knight just can't from inside their mech. Right. And there are things like a dedicated knight can do that a mage knight can't. Because yeah, otherwise, certainly. again, you want to have some balance between the th between the th sort of three axes. And then the engineers who, um, like battlefield engineers, right? Who like I like the like... idea of, of uh, battlefield engineers having the ability to like fuck with other uh, mechs. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, because they they've studied other mechs, like they've studied the wrecks of other mechs, yeah. and like you know like, they've been begun like like they have like they probably have like talents and such, you know, knowing finding weak points in mecha and such that they can direct their their attacks against and such to you know slow them down and shit. And they probably like probably like like an engineer probably has like a bunch of like scratch built like like personally cobbled together gear that is designed to hamper mecha and such and possibly like, mm. annoy like you know and coincidentally might be useful against infantry too. Yeah. That, yeah, that, I like the idea of um, rogues and scouts being able uh, being able to do all sorts of weird shit too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because like, fuck, if you a mech is not like a mech knight, not just gonna scout. Yeah. And again, we 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 do want there to be stuff that like. So if a part of a party like let's say a party had like was like a, a knight, his engineer, a battle mage. And like some like a rogue, a rogue, a, a scout, basically. Yeah. Uh, as an operating unit, and like they all could, they all have different things they can do, uh, and the you know, and they all like if they run into like a, some mo more than one knight, you know, like if they run into some knights, it's not the knight is not the only person who can do something because you know, right? That would get boring for the other party players. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so the last thing I think we should talk about is sort of the types of campaigns that probably would be runnable in this sort of setting. I mean, obviously, this, uh, a military campaign is the first obvious choice. Yeah. Be it either like regiment, regular military, or um, or as mercs, or as mercenaries. Like honestly, the mercenary campaign is like the is the the obvious go to. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly. Um, um, especially uh, considering there, there's you can have like a mix of different options there. Right. Like you can have like. Uh, like you can, and you'd be able to combine races more easily that way, also, especially given yep. like the way we've established the way the orcs work. Yep. Like an orc merc, like an orc merc, like an orc mech pilot working with like a human engineer, or like a human battle mage, a dwarven engineer, and like an elven scout. Right. Would be something that could be done. I mean, like the orc would have no problems with the other with the other three and. Like, the human would probably be the first to basically go, yeah, I totally get this guy. Yes. <laughs> um, and probably the dwarf would have the sort of the grudging respect of the... The dwarf being an engineer would basically look like, okay. All right, let's take a look at this ramshackle monstrosity. And, huh, so that's how you figured it out, huh? Yeah, I can work with this. <laughs> All right, he know, and he, know, he knows his business driving the thing. Yeah. All right, if we're going to work together, and we're going to have to, this is a partnership, not a, you know, knight-squire type thing like the humans do. Wait, that's how the humans do it? That's stupid. The, the human battle mage is like, that's not exact, that's not entirely not how they do it. <laughs> <laughs> and the dwarf and elf would be like, yeah, that would be stupid. <laughs> Whatever they, they, they I, I, all I know is for everything, for everything I've seen, the, the engineer, the human engineers, and the, the knights argue with each other all the time about shit. It's stupid. We got to be on the same page, man. Yeah. Okay. You, you keep, uh, you keep the thing running. I'll keep it fighting. <laughs> I can work with that, man. Just bring it back at least semi-functional. That's all I ask. If I brought it back broken, then you wouldn't be able to fix it. Now would I? <laughs> Duh. And I'll see what I can do to keep it running in the field if, if things go particularly wrong. You know, you know how it works. The whole time the elf's like, "Yeah, you guys figure that out. I'm gonna I'm gonna go find our actual target." <laughs> right. 
like I actually that that could be an interesting party, honestly. And yeah, that could, does sound like a, a pretty cool party. And actually. you can sh- you, and you could shuffle it up some too. I mean, like yeah. you have a like, like I doubt it'd be unlikely you'd have an elven an elven knight with you. Because I, yeah, I just don't envision many elven elves going merc. Yeah, like not elven like mecha pilots, <laughs> because it's just not how it works. At least not be okay. honestly murky. Uh, uh, an honest merc. Right. Like they might be like uh, uh, sort of a deep cover type of deal. Sure. But like, yeah, the, any orcs you're working with are going to fucking murder you on sight. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I because know. You just reveal your actual, uh, who you're actually doing. Right. The, sec- the second that it comes out what you're, what you're actually up to, it's like, oh, that's not cool. You lied to yeah. me about this shit. Well, cr- <laughs> Like, the funny thing is I can see, like, an orc, like, an elf tell like, it would never happen, but, like, an elf actually telling the orc up front what he's out there for, and the orc going, oh, okay. Yeah, all right, that's fine. I can Let me see up front about it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's another great, orcs don't lie. Yes. They might twig on lying by omission. Yeah, th- yes. Absolutely, but, like, actual falsehoods are just a thing they don't do. Yeah, because if I'm gonna fucking murder that guy and eat his heart, you're not really going to uh, find whatever, whatever Grog. Later, <laughs> sit there. Not hearts are chewy. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, and then you know, I mean, you can shuffle all of that up, like a like a you know a dwarven a dwarven you know pilot with like a human engineer go like. Or, or a, a dwarven pilot with a with a goblin, a gob, a exiled goblin, you know. Yeah, that could actually be really cool. <laughs> Kamala's like, huh, huh, that's how you did it. That completely really removes the need for the dynamo. That explains why you don't explode. <laughs> huh. It's a damn shame the tribe, the, the Tinker still will never take me back. So fuck <laughs> <laughs> Fuck those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Or even I don't think I, or, or even just like, huh? That's that completely removes the need for the turbine. I have no idea how art- how to articulate this at all. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, the, you could sh- again. You could shuffle up most of those roles. Like, and again, like an elven engineer probably wouldn't be that much use, honestly. Yeah, because because the weird thing. Again, because yeah. the the you know most of the mechanics for the elves are the pilots. Yep. <laughs> All right, so I think that, and so the the Merc the Merc campaign is the obvious one, and I think the most probably the most satisfying. Mm. And you can do adventurous stuff also, just in general. I mean, it's it's a classic, you know. I could also see doing a. Um, this would probably be limited mostly to to one of the the races, but doing um doing like a a, a political one where you actually have to occasionally get your hands dirty. Sure. Um, it's not one I would be terribly interested in because I don't get I would get to spend enough time in my giant robot. I'll be playing the knight, duh. <laughs> I mean, you can also have multiple knights in a group, obviously. Sure, abs- absolutely. And you know, I, again, also most knights also are trained how to fight outside their mech because you know, duh. because duh. <laughs> but they're probably not as good as someone who's actually spent their life training how to fight. Just yeah, to- like. Yeah, like a um, a footman would probably kick a knight's ass outside of his uh, mech. Right. <laughs> I now have this amusing image of like an orc knight getting out of his mech and like get like getting into an argument with a, go- with a, go- a goblin infantryman. And the goblin infantryman going, "Yeah, let's go outside the suit, dude." And the goblin orc going, "Hey, yeah, fuck you, dude! I'm totally get into my suit. It's gonna be awesome." <laughs> that wouldn't be a fair fight then. You outmass me. Unless you want to start breaking, want to start breaking, unless you want to start breaking. I'll mass you now. <laughs> yeah, and I can still take you. I don't. I just don't Fuck want to bust, you, dude. I'm not, I just don't want to bust out the anti mech gear. I don't want to break your mech. That'd be bad for the unit. Fuck you, dude. I'll totally kick your ass in my mech. <laughs> <laughs> 
the funny thing is, I can imagine like like a green, like a actually the image is like a like a very green orc mech pilot getting to argue with a goblin, like a, a grizzled salt salt of an goblin infantryman, starting to try to pick a fight outside the mech, and the other orcs going, "Oh no!" Yeah, and like and like one trying to stop, but the other was going, "He's got to learn." <laughs> it was like happened. It all ha- it happened to each of us what, uh, at least once. Let's watch what happens. <laughs> they have a very surprised young orc on the ground with a goblin with a spear over his head, pointing at its throat, going, Give up yet, bucko? Uh, huh. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> it's a lesson virtually every more orc mech pilot learns. Don't believe you got the goblin infantrymen around. They've been turning their lives how to fight mano a mano. <laughs> you haven't. You've been tra- you've been training to fight a mech. Like you know the basics, but right. But I'm bigger than stronger. Yeah, and he has, he's got like ten years of skill in you, lad. <laughs> Dude, he's a goblin infantryman. He's Dude, an old he's goblin infantryman. Infantry what does that tell you? <laughs> we use them as cannon fodder. <laughs> And he's still alive. Think about it. Do you see the? Do you see the the the, the our axemen over there? Do you see the respect they give him? Yeah. You don't end up with veteran goblins unless they're badasses. And you don't bully the, the the you don't bother bullying the don't don't bother bullying the the the, the cannon fodder around. What's the fucking point? <laughs> oh no! I can kick this little goblin who's been tra- been training with a spear for a year and a half around. Oh no! Yeah, that makes well, you big and tough. You. That ma- that makes you tough. Makes you a big man. <laughs> <laughs> I really I think it's really actually kind of hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> like the orc knights are just really not into bullying because it's just like what's the fucking point? The people we can or- bully, there's nothing to be gained from it. And the people right. we think we can bully, we can't. <laughs> uh, I mean it's not, you know. Yeah, exactly. Ghost Track in the chat is like, beware of the, an old man in a profession where men usually die young. Yeah. Exactly, yes. <laughs> yeah, I kind of I kind of dig this a little so far. Yeah. So, outside of... So, the other question is, like, there... I mean, obviously, there, there are other... You could do a non-mech-centric campaign in this setting also, obviously. Oh, certainly. Absolutely. You do an esp you do an espionage one where everyone's trying to nick each other's plans. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can just have a traditional adventuring company, obviously. Yep. Um, it's just you know, but you've got these magic, magic, magic mechs. I mean, why yeah, you... it's like playing it's like playing mech warrior without anyone playing being an actual fucking mech warrior. Yeah, I you can't don't... have the giant robot and not have me pilot one. <laughs> <laughs> No, Eric, you can't have the candy. I want the candy. <laughs> nope, the candy is not for you. I'm having some candy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think that pretty much covers... I mean, I... Unless we, unless we want to dive into more details, I think I think we've basically established a pretty solid setting. Yeah, I, I think we've got a pretty good setting here. Like, we can, like write up something more concise, but this is a, a, a good setting for someone to, like, staple their own campaign onto. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah. That's, I think, going to do it for this week, then. Uh, any last words you want to say? Any last thoughts on the campaign? I want to be a Mecha Knight. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be an Orc Mecha Knight. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, the, I will say, before we go, I... The challenges for there are challenges for setting up this campaign. Honestly, just a few. <laughs> uh, mostly being coming up with rules for how mechs work. Yeah, I suppose you could adapt stuff out of um, Dream Pod Nines. Yeah, uh, you could system. possibly adapt. You could probably adapt something out out of out of whatever. Uh, what is it? I forget the name of the system. Uh, like Heavy Gear. Well, Heavy Gear is the the setting, but it's there's an it's 
silhouette. Silhouette, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, their, their silhouette system with heavy gear stuff, you could probably work something out from that. You could pro I guess you could do something with Battletech, MechWarrior, but... Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Mechs and Battletech are so range-centric. And they're so fucking huge. Yeah, I think that's why I sort of... Uh, um, there's... Big Eyes Small Mouth? Big Eyes Small Mouth probably would actually... Big Eyes Small Mouth would probably do it reasonably well, despite the fact that I'm not a big fan of the system personally. Yeah. I think it's got a good... It's, it's mech supplement is fairly well detailed. You could probably work something out with that. Uh, uh, broken Record Time Hero System would do it. Uh, yeah. Shock he, uh, Hero Hero and GURPS would both be able to do it. Yeah, I think Hero would do it slightly better, but GURPS could do it, definitely. Um, but GURPS could do it where it would take you 15, uh, 15 minutes to make a character <laughs> as opposed to six hours. <laughs> uh, yeah, assuming that assuming that you've got pre-made templates for building mecha, yes. Yeah. And, and that, that will be the, the, the big deal, uh, putting together templates for, for the mecha. Yeah, that, that's the big deal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm certain you could probably do it in almost any... Almost any universal system you could probably do it okay in. Um, yeah. I don't know how well it would work in Fate. Oh, I've never man. played Fate, so I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, my head's hurting on that one. Uh, but yeah. Uh, but like a lot of rules, uh, sort of a lot of the more rules light systems probably could handle it reasonably well, as long as you're willing to hand wave some shit, basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I just have images. Uh, oh, that's how you do a dungeon dive with a fucking knight. Giant catacombs. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like the giants used to like, you know, like at one at some point the giants like ruled the roost overall, but they, they they're a dying race. Yeah, which is why there are fewer of them now, and why and why they bothered to start conscripting like the ogres and the fomori. Yep. Ooh, one yeah. last thought: the, mm -hmm. the giants don't bother recruiting trolls. Yes, um, giants don't bother recruiting trolls for a couple reasons. One, trolls have sort of a similar thing with the orcs, except they don't bond nearly as readily with non-trolls. Right. Two, trolls will eat anything, including their friends. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, which normally isn't a big deal between trolls because of regeneration. It's just very rude. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, when, when Fomori ends up, like, getting his arm torn off and, and noshed on as a snack by this by a troll, that, that's a problem. <laughs> I just imagine these two trolls are like, hungry, rip, um, oi! Uh, that, that was mine. It's going to be a week to grow back. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's going to do it for this week, folks. Uh, we normally save time in each episode for viewer questions and such. Uh, obviously, when we do the campaign brainstorming things, we generally run over, run over the time slot for that. Um, yeah, just a bit. Uh, and uh, I think we have a couple that we haven't gotten to yet. We haven't gotten any via email, but we have. I think we have a few in the questions in this comment section on YouTube. Oh, um, cool. But, uh, so yeah, if you've got questions you'd like us to answer in the show about role-playing games, what have you, Please let us know. Our, our email address is surlygrognards at yahoo.com, S U R L Y G R O G N A R D S at yahoo.com, or you can post them in the comment section on YouTube. Um, the YouTube channel for the people who are live is uh, youtube.com slash mechagm, I think. You can find me on YouTube, anyways. I'm mechagm there, too, yeah. obviously. Uh, recordings of this go live. I, I upload the recordings of this to uh, YouTube, unsurprisingly. Um, if you've got feedback for us, ways we can make the show better, constructive criticism, the like, we love getting that shit. Please send it to us. Uh, our same email address or on YouTube, what have you. Or I guess you could tweet them at me. My Twitter handle is at MechaGM. Uh, that all works. Uh, lastly, uh, if you've got show topic suggestions for us, goddamn we love show topic suggestions. Please send them to yeah, us. Yeah, we do. Uh so, uh, yeah, if you've got things you want us to talk, spend an episode talking about, send them to us. We love getting that shit. Uh, lastly, before we go, if you've got thoughts on the campaign setting, questions about the campaign setting, ideas for it, 
let us know. If we get enough of that stuff, we'll probably work it at the beginning of the next show. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, or if it, God, if you've got like campaign like campaign settings you'd like us to brainstorm, dude, we love it. We love doing this. It's a yeah, lot of fun. These are fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, we, and honestly, it plays to our strength. It plays to some of our strengths, honestly. Yeah, uh, we don't do them all that often because then it's all we'll fucking do. <laughs> yeah, honestly, if we, yeah, we, we and we'll eventually we'd eventually run out of ones we want to do. But like, if you've got right. ideas for us, we love getting them. We won't. I can't promise we'll do them immediately, but I keep. I, I have a. I, I will. I will start keeping a list of all the ones, and we, we'll we get love, to them eventually. We'll, we'll <laughs> we will. We will get to them because we love doing this. Uh, for those of you who are, have not caught the earlier ones, I think all of them are up on YouTube. Uh, we've got a post-apocalyptic fantasy one. Uh, we have a sci-fi one that we're not that happy with, honestly. Yeah. It. it... It's didn't not our click best together work. the way, yeah. It didn't uh, click together right. Uh, the superhero one, which I think was one of our better ones, uh, and then the science, the sci-fi fantasy combo one, which I think is one of the best, is probably the best we've done so far. That was the one we had with the the uh, the aether ships, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I like that one. That one is really cool. Uh, if you if you haven't heard those, go find them on. They're on YouTube. They're in the playlist on YouTube. Check them out. They're all they're they're all interesting. Uh, I just think the sci-fi one's probably our weakest one. We may may do another sci-fi one at some point. Um, other than that, that's going to do it for this week. Uh, oh, before I forget, we record the show Monday nights at s- roughly 7 p.m. Eastern here on twitch.tv slash mechagm. Uh, and as I said, I upload the recordings to YouTube, uh, usually within a day or two at most. Uh, that, I think that's it. We'll be back probably next week because we're not done, we're not, we're not going to be done uh, watching, uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure for a three-minute anime podcast, which is the other podcast we do. Yep. Uh, uh, we won't be done watching that by next week. Uh, no. <laughs> no. We're there have not been enough grenades stuff into people's scarves yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to do it for this week, guys. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye, humans.